yes students this is the second video okay a mini lecture on to the blood vascular system and in this okay presentation i will cover the capillaries okay you we have already learned the classification of blood vessel arteries then capillaries and then the veins okay so i will tell you about the capillaries today now capillaries are the network of blood vessels which connects the meta arterioles with the venules now let us see what is meta arterioles meta arterioles i told you in the last lecture they are the terminal arterioles from terminal arteriole which is hardly around 15 to 20 millimicron in size okay meta arterioles they take origin from the side of terminal arterioles and immediately breaks up into capillary fluxus okay so the capillaries are network of the blood vessels okay and they connect on one end the arterial end of the capillaries is through the terminal arterioles or meta arterioles and the other end of the capillary okay where they again form a small vessels that is called as venules so the smallest vessel in the vein uh, is the venule so they form the venules so capillary thus are at the junction of the arteriolar end and the venule end okay between the arterial and venous system so they are just a link between the arterial and the venous system now the capillary they supply the oxygen and nutrition to each and every cell of the body okay they just give the oxygen and nutrition which the arteries bring i told you that when the function of the arteries i will i was telling you they carry the oxygenated blood which contain the nutrition from heart towards the capillaries okay capillaries are absent in epithelium okay otherwise capillaries are present everywhere okay there is no tissue in the body which is not having the capillary except these th three or four places and which are these places where the capillaries are absent it is epithelium any kind of epithelium which are surface lining say it is simple epithelium or the stratified epithelium all the epithelium are avascular then how they get their nourishment and the oxygen supply it is through the diffusion in the sub uh, on the sub epithelial connective tissue so the epithelium rest on the connective tissue layer and from there it gets uh, its nourishment okay and oxygen supply this blood i am mean, sure the capillaries are also absent in cornea okay why they are absent in cornea because cornea need to be a transparent structure otherwise how the light rays will pass if capillaries are present there are blood vessels so cornea is also avascular okay no capillaries then the lens of the eye because of the same region it is not supplied with the blood and cartilages that means all kind of cartilages whether it is the hyaline cartilage elastic cartilage or the fibro cartilage okay they are not supplied by the blood vessel that means the blood vessel don't penetrate the cartilage okay they don't penetrate so how this is tissues and cartilage they get their nourishment they get from the diffusion of the neighboring blood vessels okay by the neighboring blood vessels now let's come to see the diameter of a capillary i said that capillary is a plexus a network of the blood vessels and if you see the network i mean say dimension of this uh, one of the uh, i mean to say uh, capillary okay this is around 6 to 8 micron i told you that meta arterioles or terminal arterioles was somewhere between 15 to 20 micron this has reduced further 6 to 8 micron structure okay and this is a narrow space why the capillary forms a plexus and why they are of a small i mean say very narrow diameter the reason is to well, the plexus of capillaries are present in every tissue of the body 
okay and this is directly coming in contact with the tissue okay directly coming in contact with the tissue okay and it is uh, slow i mean say narrow because the blood flow has to be slow and the slow blood flow will provide the sufficient time for the exchange between the capillaries and the tissue and the tissue now after this let's come to see what is the structure of a capillary hmm. now if you see the general structure of the capillary as it is shown in this diagram you can see that there is a lining the lumen of the capillary is lined by the endothelial cell in this there are two endothelial cells are shown one is with the nucleus is another the nucleus may be some distance away from okay so there are two endothelial cell which is forming the lumen of the capillary which is around 6 to 8 micron in size okay now this endothelial cells they rest on to the basal lamina okay they are just any other epithelial cell they also rest on to the basal lamina so this epithelial cell that is the squamous epithelium or endothelium as it is called in blood vessels it is resting also on the basal lamina which is a homogeneous uh, material and in this uh, basal lamina there may be presence of a cell what is called as pericyte okay and this pericyte is a specially modified cell they have the contractibility they are branches they have many branches and they surround the capillaries okay diameter of the capillaries and since they are contractile they can regulate the diameter of the capillary further reduce okay it may further reduce now the pericytes are the modified form of the smooth muscle we have seen that in case of the terminal arterioles there was similar endothelial lining and there were one or two layers of the smooth muscle cell okay which were regulating the blood flow through the terminal arterioles here in the capillary it is in instead of the smooth muscle a modified form of the smooth muscle hmm, called as pericyte both have the same function okay the the function of the contraction okay now i pass to the next slide where we will learn further about this capillary now let us see the different types of capillaries which are present in our body there are one class of the capillaries which is called as the continuous capillary see this is the continuous capillary i will explain what is continuous capillaries then there are fenestrated capillaries where there are the holes okay mm, openings which are seen in the endothelial cells okay which are lining to the lumen of the capillary they show the pores okay the pores are present mm, and these type of capillaries they are called as fenestrated and then lastly a third type of the capillaries which are sometime not classified as capillary but an special class of the blood vessel they are said to be but here i have just put it under the heading of the capillaries itself they are called as cyanocyte for example here hmm, the cyanocytes are the dilated blood vessel not narrow like the uh, capillary whether continuous or fenestrate we will learn more about the three different types of the capillaries continuous fenestrated and cyanocyte in this short lecture okay now what is continuous capillaries hmm? this continuous capillaries they are lined by endothelial cell like anywhere else hmm? so this is a photograph i am so sorry illustration of the continuous capillary okay it is continuous and they are lined by the endothelial cells hmm? two or three cells may form the lumen of the capillaries okay the capillary right and these are held together that means the cells are held together with each other see this junction between the two adjacent endothelial cell it is by a special junctional complex okay that is called as tight junction that means nothing can pass between these two endothelial cell because so they are so tightly connected to each other okay now when you will go to the histology classes 
then you will learn about the cell to cell contact one of which i am showing you here as the tight junction right now this endothelial cell they rest on the basal lamina okay and this uh, basal lamina may contain uh, the pericyte okay the pericyte so if anything has to pass through these capillaries okay anything which has to pass through these capillaries because they are present in tissue okay a plexus of this type of the vessel is present in tissue which is directly touching to the cell surface okay it has to cross the endothelium it has to cross the endothelium that means cell membrane uh, at two sides hmm? inner side and outer side and cytoplasm so there is a transport whether it is going from outside to inside or from inside that as i told you the function of the capillaries is lot of exchange which takes place gaseous exchange and that of the exchange of substances which takes place through these capillaries one has to pass through this okay through, through vessel lamina and then through the endothelial cell fill cell and this kind of the transport is called as the trans endothelial transport trans endothelial transport keep on noting in your notebook please okay so this is called as the trans endothelial transport is there so this is the continuous type of capillary and this continuous type of capillaries are found at certain places in our body like muscles skeletal muscle smooth muscle okay they are found in brain hmm. so the uh, there is a brain uh, blood brain barrier which you will learn later okay so the material has to pass substance have to pass gaze have to pass through this hmm, barriers okay that is here the barrier is formed by the endothelial cell but there the in blood brain the additional barrier will be there which uh, i will tell you in the next lecture when i will teach you the general anatomy of the nervous system okay nervous system now this kind of the capillary continuous capillaries are also uh, seen in the skin okay they supply skin they supply the lung okay they supply the lung okay and to the connective tissue and to the connective tissue so these are the sites where continuous capillaries are seen now i move to the next slide please and this is the second type of the capillaries and that is called as fenestrated capillaries where i have shown that there is presence of the minute pores or slit between the i mean to say in the, within the uh, cell of endothelial cell okay now this fenestrated capillary here the plasma membrane of endothelial cell have circular pores the pores are the circular in this diagram which you are seeing you are not able to i mean to say visualize the circular nature of this pore okay because it can be seen from inside or outside the but imagine that the pore shape of the pore is circular so they are circular in diameter okay they are circular in diameter i mean so the diameter i mean so circumference is there okay and their size of these circular pores which is present within the cell and there are multiple multiple pores in a single endothelial cell are there it is uh, the size is around 70 to 100 nanometer in diameter okay just try to differentiate what is the millimicron or mu and what is the nanometer now it is a single nanometer or 1 nanometer is equal to the thousandth part of 1 millimicron okay 1 millimicron thousandth part of the 1 millimicron is an end, which is seen only through the electron microscope okay not by ordinary microscope okay so they are very fine and these pores are closed by the thin diaphragm you see in this diagram i have just drawn hmm, that the pore is not continuously open it is having a diaphragm a thin Uh, line is connecting the uh, is there in the bottom of the pore and that is called as the diaphragm so there is always a diaphragm in the pore okay this kind of the capillaries are found in pancreas 
okay endocrine glands and you know that endocrine glands they exchange the express through the blood okay hormones then it is present in villi of the intestine where the absorption is very fast okay so for rapid absorption this arrangement is there of the fenestration or the presence of the pores okay not like continuous capillaries where the rapid exchange is not needed okay then you have learned in your lower classes that there is presence of the renal glomeruli okay okay bowman's capsule and glomeruli where filtration takes place where between the efferent and afferent arterioles these renal glomeruli are also fenestrated for rapid filtration of the blood okay so which will go and filtrate will go into the bowman's capsule and then to the proximal convoluted loop of henle and distal convoluted tubules this kind of the capillaries are also found in choroid plexus okay what is choroid plexus you may not be knowing and soon you will go when you will go into the uh, i mean to say for dissection of the brain there you will see that it is a plexus of the capillary which is responsible for formation of the cerebro spinal fluid that is called as choroid plexus just remember it okay detail you will learn later okay now i move to the next type of the capillary and this is called as sinusoid and sinusoids are large okay so sometimes that's why they are not classified as capillaries but they are also connecting at one end they are connected to the arterioles terminal arterioles meta arterioles and other end of the sinusoid is connected to the venules okay they again the link between the arterial and venous system though they are very large their hmm, uh, size is around 30 to 40 micron so the capillary was only uh, 6 to 8 micron where the bloods rbcs were going in a single file because the diameter of the rbc is 7.2 millimicron so hmm, they have to go one after the other through the capillary so that's why the flow of the blood in capillary plexus is slow it is slow sometime when this capillary is narrow then this rbc can fold on uh, fold themselves and then squeeze their way to the lumen of the capillaries okay but here in case of sinusite the diameter is 30 to the 40 micron and and this sinusoid are therefore irregular in shape there in capillary the shape was very regular okay it is tube okay of uh, 6 to 8 micron but here it is a dilated structure okay irregular in shape now arterioles are directly connected to the uh, venules through the sinusoid that point i have already told you okay now they are also lined by endothelium okay endothelium hmm? Uh, epithelium is endothelium which is squamous epithelium see this lining here this is the endothelium lining here and since they are dilated there may be many, endoth many endothelial cell lining to a single sinusoid okay mm -hmm. now there are the presence of large pores see these pores okay and these pores are also exactly present in the similar fashion in as it was in fenestrated epithelium okay endothelium here it is there but then this slit or the pores which are here hmm, there is no diaphragm there it was a thin membrane was covering to the pore opening of the pore here it is absolutely free even sometime the basal lamina is also not covering to these pores okay so on which this endothelial cells are resting okay cells are so that the contents of the blood i mean to say whatsoever is filled inside the sinusoid come freely can come outside okay and similarly from tissue it can go inside okay so there is a hmm, free exchange of course these pores are not very large okay they are not very large they are also in microns okay microns so the blood cannot i mean say cells hmm, the blood cells RBC is 7 to 8 microns, so these pores are less than 8 microns. Then the white blood cells and other cells of the blood, they are quite large, so they cannot come out, okay. But plasma, liquid part, okay, that is very rapidly, it comes and goes inside, okay. 
Now this endothelial cells in between though it is not shown in this diagram but there are presence of the phagocytic cells. Phagocytic cells means what? In your class, lower classes you must have learned about this phagocytic cell. They engulf or they eat away the foreign body or foreign cells which are circulating in the blood. Okay? So that same function is here for the phagocytic cells which are there hmm, by the side of these endothelial cells in sinusoid. Okay? Now this, this kind of the arrangement of sinusoid is found in liver. Okay? It is found in liver where the phagocytic cells are there. They are called as Kufer cells. Okay? Just remember if you can. Okay? They are called and they eat away all those pigment, all those debris. Uh, bacteria, virus, they can eat away, okay, Kupfer cells, okay. Now, this kind of sinusoids are also found in bone marrow, okay, in the spleen, in the anterior pituitary gland, okay, and adrenal gland. Both pituitary and adrenal, they are endocrine gland. So, there the exchange is much faster as compared to the exchange hmm, where the fenestrated capillaries are there. That's why these sinusoids are there. Okay, that's why in the liver the exchange is very fast okay in the liver so the sinusoids hmm, plenty of sinusoids are there and this plenty of sinusoids there the exchange takes place between the sinusoid means the blood flowing through the capillaries or sinusoid and between the liver cells and between the liver cells so this is the third kind of the uh, capillaries that is sinusoid so in this lecture what you have learned is that at the junction of the arterial and terminal arteriole and the venule okay there are the uh, capillaries present and these capillaries are usually in the form of the plexus interanastomosing blood vessels which are present within the tissue and they are involved in the exchange this exchange cannot take place through the arterioles, it cannot take place through the venules or vein. Only the place where the gaseous exchange and the exchange of substance which can take place is only capillaries. So capillary plays a very important role in the blood vascular system. I hope that you have understood this uh, mini lecture. Thank you very much.